Alrighty guys, welcome back to Star Wars Review. Today I'm uh, reviewing the book of Boba Fett, uh, Chapter 6, From the Desert Comes a Stranger, which was written by uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, and it was also directed by uh, Dave Filoni, and it was released on February 2nd, 2022. So yeah, um, I thought it was a good episode. Um, I mainly have two problems with the episode. One, it once again was not a book of Boba Fett episode, it was more of a Mandalorian episode, and even then it was more of a Grogu episode, so I'm kind of just upset that uh, they make a Boba Fett show. Um, in the first four episodes are, you know, mainly flashbacks, trying to catch up to the present day. There's still present day story going on, but it's not as much, it's mostly flashback. Uh, and there's like a story reason, he's on like fully healed, and he uses heal up, and they finally get to the point where he's fully healed up and there's no more flashbacks. And then they completely switch uh, gears and it becomes a Mandalorian Season 3. Um, you know, uh, Boba, it does appear in this episode, but um, he does not have any uh, lines of dialogue. Uh, and so it's just kind of weird uh, that, uh, you know, it's a series titled The Book of Boba Fett. And, uh, they're spending two episodes where he's basically not in, um, one of them, he straight up isn't, and second, he, uh, you know, doesn't have a speaking role, <laughs> and he's the titular character, so, yeah, um, honestly, I probably wouldn't be as complaining if the first four episodes I didn't feel were as dragged out as they were, uh, flashbacks lasted way too long, uh, but, you know, I'll be talking about that more in a full season review uh, once, you know, the seventh episode comes out. Uh, so, yeah. But, um, you know, the majority of the episode is Grogu-based. Uh, and it then heads to this uh, kind of foresty-ish uh, green planet, uh, which is the location of where uh, Luke and Grogu are. Um Seems like Luke is building a Jedi temple. I don't know if it's the one we see in, uh, you know, the sequel trilogy or what. It's obviously different looking in the sequel trilogy. It's nighttime, so, you know, this could be where it started and kind of got expanded upon. I don't know. Uh, or maybe it's just like a first little temple and then he goes off and builds another one. But, um, you know. Din arrives there, but, um, Ahsoka is also there, and Din and Ahsoka talk, and, you know, she tells him that Grogu's training is, you know, going well and whatnot, but Din can't see him because, you know, the attachment stuff, uh, but Din, you know, agrees with her and, and does, you know, leave without seeing Grogu, but, uh, he does give Ahsoka the gift for Grogu, uh, but, uh, most of the episode was Luke, uh, training Grogu, a lot of cute moments in there, why not? Um, some stuff of Luke. Um, I'll talk about more in a moment. Uh, that um, there's a scene with Luke and Ahsoka, which is cool. I I, I liked it. Um, basically talking talking about Grogu and if you know Grogu can actually do the training and you know become a Jedi. Um, but um, you know. Basically, Ahsoka tells Luke to, you know, let Grogu decide, um, which at the end of the episode, uh, we see Luke give Grogu a choice, um, he shows Grogu the, uh, gift Din gave him, uh, which is this, uh, little chainmail armor, uh, cute, um, or, you know, he shows Grogu, uh, a lightsaber, which Luke says, uh, Yoda's, uh, but, you know, Grogu can only choose one, because Grogu, you know, become a Jedi has to forego all attachments and whatnot. Which I felt was kind of weird, uh, because Luke doesn't follow that, so... Kind of weird that he's making Grogu follow it, but I guess... Maybe it's a little different, I guess, but, um, you know... Yeah, but, you know, the choice, we don't see Grogu... The side ends before the episode ends before it can. I'm gonna assume he's gonna choose to go back with Din. Uh, you know, 
but I could be wrong. Uh, when season two was airing, I thought, you know, Grogu was, wasn't going to actually find a Jedi, or if he did, he was just going to stay with Din anyways, um, but I was wrong, uh, and, you know, obviously Luke appeared and whatnot, and Grogu went with him, uh, I don't know, obviously we'll see, I don't know if we'll see that in the next episode of the Book of Boba Fett or not, I don't know, but now let's talk about Luke, um, I enjoyed the episode, uh, like I said, and I enjoyed Luke in the episode, but I'm just not a fan of this artificial, uh, humans, um, you know, uh, CGI alien characters and whatnot, uh, you know, I've been fine with that in movies and, and so shows and whatnot, uh, but humans, I just do not like, it just feels so weird, um, and this is when it's at its absolute worst in my opinion, because, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like an actual performance, uh, from a human, it feels fake, it feels like it's a computer, um, because, uh, um, obviously, for Mandalorian Season 2, it definitely seems like they went for CGI recreation of Mark Hamill, this time it seems like they went for deep fake, uh, more so, um, because it, deep fake does look a lot more, uh, believable, but it kind of Leave a little more flatness in the face, which are some moments when it kind of does look a little more flat, but, you know, in the episode, it, it was definitely believable, it didn't, like, look as bad as the Mandalorian season 2, that Mandalorian season 2 looked really bad, but, um, this time it, it, it looked good, but, you know, I just, there's just something about it I just don't like, um, the voice wasn't good, it, you know, it just didn't work, it was, you know, I would assume they did the same thing from season two of Mandalorian, just took a bunch of recordings of Mark Hamill from the 70s and 80s, and put it into a computer and artificially made, uh, the dialogue, uh, which it feels like that, all, all the dialogue feels like it was made in a computer, uh, you know, it just felt weird and kind of cheesy, um, some that could also be writing. That's how they wrote Luke. Um, can make it feel cheesy, but is the kind of the voice was exactly the same. They really had the same emotion to it the entire time, uh, and so it it just it, it fell off. It didn't feel human, um, which is all I'm just gonna say. It's the entirety of it did not feel human. It felt. Like a computer made artificial performance, um, which, you know, there's a lot more to that than just Star Wars. I think it's terrible for, uh, the movie in, uh, this entertainment industry. Uh, you know, um, at least Mark Hamill uh, is agreeing to it and why not, um, but... It's somewhere it's like, uh, and it's already been done uh, in Star Wars. Bring an actor or actress who has, you know, passed away back through this way. At least they're not doing that right now. Obviously, they they have they have done it, and it's weird, and I don't like it, uh, and. You know, I kind and anytime something like this happens, I just don't like it. But you know, that that's enough about that. Um, I just didn't really like that. And then, that and the lack of Boba Fett are my only gripes about this episode. Uh, they are kind of big ones, though. Um, you know, they're ones I can't really overlook. So, kind of drags down the episode a lot for me. Um, for instance, like, all that stuff with Luke and Krogu, uh, you know, Soka and Din and whatnot. If that was an episode of an animated show, I would have loved it. Uh, but, because it's live action and Mark Hamill is, uh, in his 70s now, I believe, and 
can actually play a young version of, it, of himself, uh, you know, and just all this, it's just, it's just really weird, and I just don't like it, but, you know, like, I, I still enjoyed everything with, uh, Luke and Grogu and whatnot, but, you know, I would, you know, like if it was not in the book of Boba Fett, if they saved it for the third season of The Mandalorian, but, yeah, Anyways, uh, everything that happened on Tatooine in this episode was great. Uh, <laughs> man, because, you know, of uh, some characters returning, uh, like Cobb Vanth. He's back. You know, I love Cobb Vanth. He's, uh, you know, one of my favorite characters. <laughs> but then uh, tries to employ uh, his help to fight against the Pikes. Uh, but him and the uh, people of uh, Mos Pelgo, now referred to as Freetown, are... You know, a little hesitant about it, but, um, then seems to convince Vance to help them because he says, you know, the Pikes are eventually going to come from Moss Pelgo, uh, but, uh, you know, then then leaves and then, you know, a, a stranger comes from the desert, uh, you know, this is the title of the episode, or, well, that's not the title of the episode, but it's, I'm using words from the title of the episode, you can find uh, Vanth, and that stranger is one cowboy hat wearing Duro's bounty hunter named Co- Cad Bane. I almost called him, call him Cobb Vanth, uh, which I'm really happy to see my second favorite bounty hunter in live action. My first is, my first is Boba Fett, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we get them both in the same live action series, which is great. But this scene was great. Uh, it was a super tense scene. Um... Bane is uh, working for the Pikes, and he tells Vance to not work for Fett. Uh, you know, saying he'll give uh, Vance you know, more money to just stay put and not deal with anything. But, you know, it leads to a duel after Vance's um, deputy uh, pulls his blaster on Bane, which leads to the deputy dying and Vance getting shot in the shoulder. But it seems like Vance might be okay. I'm not sure we didn't see him, like, get up in the episode, but, um, you know, they all kind of rushed to, uh, advance to help him out and whatnot, the citizens of, uh, Mos Palga or Freetown, um, but, uh, it seems like that kind of will get them to, uh, you know, fight against the Pikes, like the, um, the weak way, um, bartender, you know, kind of see him, you know, go to Vance and, then, like, stand up and look back at, uh, Cad Bane, who has walked away, but, you know, it was great seeing Cobb Vanth and Cad Bane again, uh, Bane, I, I do wish he was maybe a little darker blue, but, you know, he is old, uh, he's, like, probably, like, 70, maybe even 80 at this point, so, he's an old dude, uh, and the only time we've actually ever really seen him is during and directly after the Clone Wars, so, yeah, uh, if he did, if he didn't appear in the Bad Batch, I would have probably been way more excited to see him. Uh, uh, I guess also I was kind of just expecting Cad Bane to appear in this series, uh, so I wasn't super surprised by it. Where the Bad Batch, I was a lot more uh, surprised to see Cad Bane, but um, you know, I'm super happy to see him. I'll also, kind of had to be the scene where he's introduced. It. He's with one of my newer favorite characters, Cobb Vance. And, you know, I didn't want Cobb Vance to die, so I was just like, oh no, please don't kill Cobb Vance. Uh, but, uh, and he might be, Cobb Vance might be dead, um, which, um, I'll be very sad, but, uh, you know, uh, but, um, you know, the scene just was very good. I, I really liked it, definitely had a very, you know, obviously it was this an old western doll uh, scene, and I know the visual aspects were great. And the episode definitely had a lot of solid uh, visual uh, moments, um, which uh, Dave Filoni uh, is two episodes from the first season of Mandalorian I thought were very uh, wonky in a way. Um, chapter 5 from the Mandalorian, uh, the uh, episode Filoni wrote and directed is my least favorite episode of, um, you know, The Mandalorian. Uh, if you include the Book of Fett, it's just my least favorite 
episode of the uh, you know, Mandalorian universe. Um, but, uh, you know, the Ahsoka episode from season two and this episode I thought uh, definitely visually were very good. Um, the Ahsoka episode definitely took a lot of samurai uh, inspirations and this episode definitely took a lot of a uh, Western inspirations, at least the moments on Tatooine, so, yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, it was a good episode, but, you know, it kind of was dragged down by two big gripes for me. Obviously, Boba Fett, once again, not appearing in his own show. Um, he doesn't even have a speaking role. Uh, oh, there's clone troopers with more, uh, speaking. I did not talk about that. Uh, Grogu has a flashback to Order 66. Uh, we see clone troopers... We see Jedi protecting Grogu. How did I not talk about that? I swear to God I wrote that somewhere. I don't know how I forgot to talk about that. But Grogu, there's a flashback to Order 66 and it's great. I really like that moment. Uh, uh, You see Grogu's past. um, But anyway, there's clone troopers. More lines than Boba Fett. And possibly around the same uh, screen time as uh, Boba Fett. Uh. Um, so that's kind of funny, but, um, also Artificial Luke Skywalker, I, I just don't like, I'm not going to talk anymore about that, though. Uh, but, uh, my grade, I'll give it a B, so yeah. Anyways, uh, Chapter 7, I'll be getting a review of that out on Wednesday. This time I'm going to, I'm going to not, uh, you know, be a week, almost a week late, uh, like it was for this episode and last episode, so, yeah, but, uh, then I'll have a, uh, full season, uh, review out after that, but I've been sorry to you, and I'll catch you guys in the, uh, next one. I am not a bounty hunter. I've heard otherwise.